Kyle here from allmediareview.blogspot.com. Gonna do another Kevin Gilbert album videos. Random number generator. There are nine of them. There's six left. And I got numero cuatro, which would be the Toy Matinee self-titled album, which came out June 28th, 1990, officially. So I've shown my versions, including the cassettes. I'm not gonna show that. I got here's this one of the standard versions. I have like one of the three left. And I could show how this is. It's weird. It has like Greek lettering. I n I've never fully understood the reasoning behind the Greek lettering on that. Um, but, you know, there's probably a good explanation for it. I should know it. Um, then the special edition, which came out, I think I want to say it was in the mid or late 90s. It has a write up from Patrick Leonard, I recall. Yeah, right here. Back, okay, so it was 2000. This is August of 2000 when he wrote this. You can see there. Um, of course, it's the collaboration largely between Kevin Gilbert and um, Patrick Leonard, um, which he, as the story goes, that you know a lot of people have read about. It's been documented, but <clears throat> not everyone knows it. Casual fan that uh, Kevin Gilbert's band Giraffe was at the Yamaha Soundcheck. Yamaha. Whatever it was called, competition where they won, and he was impressed by Kevin. And he asked him if he'd want to do a, you know, be part of a band. And you know, Giraffe ended up winning that competition in LA, LA and going to um, Japan for the, and they finished second there. That was in like '88, I want to say. Yeah, it was. I think it was like the winter of '88. No, it was the fall. In the fall, and they went to Japan later. But Anyway, he met Patrick Leonard there. Yeah, so here's the, the special edition track list. It's a little different. Uh, there's some bonus tracks, which... it's Toy Matinee is on Spotify, but if I'm not mistaken, some of the tracks on here are not. There's some extra tracks on Spotify, but not all of them. Because, yeah, there's 14 songs on here, as opposed to Spotify. Well... Maybe it is the whole thing. Well, maybe it is the whole thing. I, for some reason, I was thinking there were more bonus tracks than just the, what is basically, one, two, three, five. Well, five seems, it seems shorter. Anyway, of course, I've got the vinyl, which is one of my most cherished vinyls, vinyl records. Um, not easy to find. I would, I would think, you know, this is released on, is it Columbia? Um, I should know that, too. Or was it, let's see here, Reprise. I was thinking Re Reprise. Um, that they would eventually get the rights to release this and be enough demand. It, it's not like, I'm bringing this up so much, you have Cheryl Crow's estate and um, the label PRA, who's been, was really difficult to release, uh, get the, you know, the Cheryl Crow estate I'm talking about if they were to do the, the demos for Tuesday Night Music Club and um, the getting the rights from PRA. But this album did well enough, and it still has some history, um, some history, some recognition, rather. Um, and I, I thought I had my little write-up in here, but I thought I, yeah, I did. It ha it has it has enough recognition. It's known well enough that I think pressing it on vinyl would actually have there'd be enough reason to do that, uh, especially with Patrick Leonard name still somewhat known, especially with his connections with Madonna. As he produced whatever it was, two or three Madonna albums in the '80s, and then and, and Roger Waters also. Um, so yeah, I got this thing with it. It was kind of a valued thing. This little write-up is like a press release from Reprise, Reprise Records. Anyway, I hope my battery doesn't die on this. I'll have to do a second part to it and combine them. Yeah, it even mentions Madonna and Breathless in here. I just noticed that. I thought I actually transcribed this whole thing. I thought I did in my blog. I'm pretty sure in the all media reviews at blogspot.com. You look it up when I got this vinyl from a gentleman in Wisconsin after going to the Kevin Gilbert tribute in Milwaukee. He, I bought him a T-shirt and he he sent this to me in the mail. He had a couple copies. It's not like a hundred like in perfect shape, but it's pretty decent shape considering how old it is. So anyway, um, Toy Matinee the album. I, I, gone on enough about the history about what I have here. It was, in effect, the first Kevin Gilbert album that I really loved, really knew. I really knew it was Kevin Gilbert. I had heard, technically, some of the stuff, the Magna Carta tribute stuff, including Back in New York City.
but I didn't even know back in New York City that well then. Um, and I had, I had grabbed some um, some stuff from Thud, not all of it, but some, some of the songs, um, MP3s in the early 2000s. But really, it was in 2004 that I've told that I found two copies. This is one of them, I think. Two copies of this store called Echo in Apple Valley, Minnesota. Um, excuse me. But it, um, yeah, this was it, and it kind of hit me over the head. And I've, I've gone over this. It's, it's clever pop. It sounds a little bit like Tears for Fears, or but it was done in 1990, so it's on the tail end of the, the 80s or late 80s. Um, the vocals, the just the production quality, the arrangements were just it was pop music being proggy in a way, but the songs didn't out say they're welcome. It was the perfect blending of like a pop rock song, but with some extra little nuggets. That's what I mean. The, the term progressive pop has been used, um, and not that often, but it's been used. But when I hear that term, this isn't the only one, but this is definitely one of the biggest ones that I think of. Now, I could easily identify now dozens, if not hundreds, of artists or albums that fit that description. But at the time, in 2004, when I heard this, and then, I don't know if I saw that description, not that long after... That, that This was kind of my go-to when I thought, what, what is progressive pop music? Well, this is it, or pop rock music. So, um, But from a track standpoint, I mean, this is a perfect record to me um, in a lot of ways. Every song I enjoy. Uh, of course, it's got Julian Lennon on Turn It On Salvador, which is an interesting guest spot. Um, you know, it's Last Play Now is the first song on here they made the video they made a video for that and the ballad of jenny ledge um i, I mean i i struggle with it but I, I you know if i had to you know gun to my head the whole phrase pick a favorite kevin gilbert song i still kind of think of that song it's a, a, almost a timeless you know uh track in a lot of ways and it, it it i've never gotten sick of it um someday maybe i will but you know um you know, of course, as I mentioned in the Thud video last, uh, well, earlier this week, some phrases, of course, have been reused, like Good Man, Bad Man. He had a song called Good Man, Bad Man that's on, I want to say, the Call Me Kai sessions. Um, that phrase is used. Uh, All Fall Down is used, which, of course, of course, the song on Thud that's called All Fall Down. So he frequently, Kevin and, you know, I don't know, some of that might have been Patrick Leonard. Um, let me turn the light on. I was like, worried about if it's better or worse to have the light on. But... That, I mean, that, that being said, it's just, Remember My Name is a favorite. Oh, I love that track. Um, it's kind of saying, you know, there's all these people that we learn about, including musicians, rock stars. Someday they'll remember my name. And I, I oddly enough, that's kind of been the case with Kevin, where, you know, and for people that discover his music, understand how talented he was. They're, now they're, you know, remembering his name. People need to hear his name, and they'll remember his name. Um... That song also, I have some weird image of, like, there's this movie with Sean Astin and um, uh, Kevin Bacon, which I cannot remember the name of. I should have looked it up, but I don't have the internet up here right now, of course. So, um, where they're, like, hey, those two and some other kids, like, younger kids, Kevin Bacon's, like, the camp leader, mountain climbing leader. They're climbing a mountain off of a river. Um, late 80s. I always think of that song for some reason, Only Water, the phrase Only Waters, when I hear that song. I don't know why. Um... I should look that up. Maybe I'll post it in the description. Um, things she said, and there's an alternate version of that. Uh, it's really not that different. Uh, the alternate version doesn't seem to have the bridge, but other than that, I think most of that arrangement is pretty similar. Um, the title track, which is a ballad, I always think of the whole circus thing under the you know the peanuts for all in the house. The, I think of that, and then the whole image on Shame of the True where he joins the circus. Uh, there's a connection with that. Um, what a toy matinee is, you know? Talking about toys, you know, and matinee, I think of the matinee theater, like going to a matinee movie. Uh, there's probably more meanings of that that I probably, I've always meant to look that up. It's like, what other meanings, what matinee, what does it really mean besides the whole description of a movie during the day? Um, Queen of Misery, been well documented, is about Madonna, of course. I mean, could be some other people, but, um, you know, his, Kevin's experience with Madonna, he, he did 
the cues for the Dick Tracy soundtrack, which came out like literally about, came out the same year, I think, as this. But he was making the two at the same time, so they probably got inspiration when he was working with Madonna and Madonna's people and Patrick Leonard, go figure. Um, the other one is the ballad to Johnny Ledge, of course, that there's a pop song that the connection with, in the video, because he did date um, Rosanna Arquette, I believe. I can't remember if she's in the video. The Ballad of Johnny Ledge, though, he's, he mentioned in the live toy matinee at the Live at the Roxy, and there's been some other cases where he mentioned live how it was about an Elvis impersonator that his girlfriend at the time left him for in Vegas. So, you know, the Vegas King. He runs off with the Vegas. She runs off with the Vegas King. Um, of course, at the very end, he goes, Don't be cruel. You know, the reference to, to the Elvis song, Don't be cruel. Um. Yeah, I mean, that. Okay, yeah, blank page, as I stated in the Thud video, I actually often do get more moved by, from a melancholy, sad, sympathetic way. It, to me, blank page has always been about a, like a writer with writer's block, you know. I, I guess there's other means behind it, but um, that to me, first and foremost, is what I think of some writer who's supposed to be writing something and they're just tortured and they just can't get anything and they're just, they're screwed. And it's like, all they have is a blank, they're just staring at a blank page and they want to write something, they can't come up with anything. It's just the struggle of a writer, among other things. The struggle of a, crea struggle of a creator. The struggle of someone who's got work who can't get the work done, doesn't know how to do the work. I sympathize with that. It's frustrating. Uh, there was a little boy, we always come home, we always come home, and he talks about his grandparents, you know, how someday he'll be buried with them. I don't know if that actually happened, but I think about my grand. I do think about my grandparents when I hear that song, so... So, I mean, that's the gist of it. I mean, yeah, the, some of the extra bonus tracks on the, the special edition are a little odd. Um, the last by now, the early version is quite different. The, the, the tempo and sort of the lyrics. And some of the lyrics weren't actually definitive at that point, of course. So, anyway. But um, Toy Matinee, yeah, it's weird. You know, iconic artwork. There's Patrick and um, Kevin, of course. Very transitional album in a lot of ways for Kevin's career, too, because I think of... Because it was 1990, the sort of transition of the decades, but um, his vocal style clearly changed from Giraffe to this record, where he was singing more at his natural range of whatever that is, like the tenor. And he frequently, during Giraffe and NRG and Call Me Kai stuff, he's singing at a higher range. Didn't necessarily mean... I didn't realize he could have actually been singing at the range he sang on Toy Matinee, but... He just kind of came to grips with him, was became comfortable singing. He realized, I, I can sing in this range. I don't need to sing, ah, you know, do the try doing that falsetto, but just at a higher range sounding. He sounded so much younger, but it really wasn't that different. He could have probably sang at this range with those old, other songs. In fact, Kevin Worst around today, he might have eventually done a lot of this stuff, a lot, a lot of the earlier stuff live in the range he did from Toy Matinee on. From Toy Matinee to the other stuff he did with, you know, obviously Shame of the Shame of the True and Thud and... Um, some of the other recordings. So, but yeah, this is, it's a, it's a staple record for me and a lot of people, um, you know, I mean, if people, other people don't consider it a perfect record, it's fine, but it's always been a favorite and it also holds a very huge sentimental part for me because it was really the first thing that sort of brought me in and, and kind of hit me like a ton of bricks that, no, this, this guy is brilliant. I mean, it is Patrick Leonard too, not to discount Pat, the rest of the band members. I haven't even talked about that uh, on the other uh, videos, but Patrick Leonard is half of Toy Matinee. I mean, and Third Matinee, which it's on Spotify, and I, I, I think I, I've been meaning to revisit. Of course, it has the singer from um, uh, Page, uh, Richard Page from um, uh, Mr. Mister. Um, I listened to it a few times. I think I, I have it on cassette. I, I mentioned how it doesn't sound anything like this. Well, it doesn't sound, it doesn't compare to this in a lot of ways, but but enough time has passed, I probably owe it to myself to listen to it. Maybe if I do, I'll do a video on it. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's just, I mean, could there have been more Toy Matinee? I would have liked to, but the story goes, as Kevin has mentioned, the point they were looking to do more music or even tour, you know. Um, Patrick Leonard was off in Europe working with Roger Waters and just, you know, but then they did Third Matinee without Kevin, that whole thing. And Kevin made a comment on a radio interview once, how, you know, he, he heard it, yeah, you know, but it wasn't really in the cards for him to work with him again. Um, but yeah, like, to, uh, who is it? Uh, who, the, the, um, the bass player, the guy who played with Roger Waters and Pink Floyd, um, has, he's been on YouTube, um, 
talking about Toy Matinee, and just to like go through the credits and just to, you know, not uh, reference, you know, Tim Pierce was the guitarist. He didn't tour with them. That's the weird thing. Brian McLeod did play the drums, and Guy Pratt. I was, I was spacing on Guy Pratt. And, you know, these songs were co written, really. I don't know as far as the credit goes in a lot of them, but it wasn't just Kevin. It was, you know, Guy, or Guy Pratt basically stated that, you know, some of the arrangements, I think it was in uh, Last Plane Out, he actually did compose himself. So this was really a group effort and a band. I know the whole thing with the money and the band, and, you know, Patrick Leonard made all this money working with on those Madonna albums that made, you know, a fortune. They made tens, hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't know, back in 89, 87, 88, 89, if it was that much money, but... Um, he, they, they basically said to him, you, said to him, you know, you, you, you've been so good, you've done so well with Madonna and some of his other work, what do you want? Here's all this money we have that's budgeted for the year, what do you want to do? And he's like, I want to create, I want to start my own band. So this had a lot of money behind it. Um, and as Kevin noted, ultimately within like a year or two, there was an interview of how among his, all the stuff he'd ever done, at least it made back its money, even though the touring didn't really translate to that i mean um but it was a really expensive record and it sounds pristine the mixing and the production values are just top notch you can sort of tell why they had all the money they did um but um you know it's i guess in one way it's good that they never did do an official second toy matinee or more albums because their legacy is sort of what it is it's so great um uh, at the same time though you, you wonder what if but Anything since 1996 with Kevin Gilbert is what if anyways. That's just all a parallel universe and fiction in this part of, in the world that we're in right now. But no, Toy Matinee, you know, I can never, I can't, I can't say enough good things about it. I don't know if someday I'll want to dissect it more for a video. Um, like Thud, I've kind of, I've digested it and I've, um, you know, I've, I've heard it in and out so many times that it's like this, the songs are in the back of my head. I don't know how much more I can. It's just more people that have not heard it could easily be won over by it. Especially, I mean, the Jellyfish fans love it. And I can totally see the whole thought would have been, you know, Jellyfish album, first album came out the same year, actually. Um, in fact, I got the calendar right in front of me. I could actually tell you relative to when that was. It was right around the same time. Oh, that's the wrong one. Right here. Yeah, it was August 7th, so it was only like a month and a half later. But Kevin Gilbert was a Jellyfish fan. Totally. In fact, there's a song on Thud that reminds me of Jellyfish. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I, you know, the Jellyfish thing, um, I don't know how if they would have been able to last for multiple albums. Probably not, but um, it's such a great record. You do kind of wonder if they could have done another album. But Anyway, what's your take on Toy Matinee? Is it your favorite Kevin Gilbert-related album? You know, is it, you know, what, what's your what's your take on it? Is, it? is it overrated? Some people might think it's a little overrated. I don't, obviously. A lot of the Kevin Gilbert fans don't. But um, a lot of people don't consider it their favorite Kevin Gilbert album. And you'll see where it falls in the rankings for me. But, um, but, yeah, again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.